If you want to receive a weekly email with all the updates that have happened in your database, look no further than this video. We're going to go into detail about how you can build this process using Airtable and Zapier. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, I'm Gareth Pronovost. I am the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life. If you want to learn more about how we do that, check out our website. I will include a link below. Don't miss our free Airtable crash course. It'll get you up to speed quickly and easily understanding Airtable. But without further ado, let's just jump into the heart of the matter here and talk about today's topic, which is all about sending an automated weekly email with updates within your database. So I'm looking at my screen here with tasks and weekly email being my two uh, interacting tables here. Tasks are pretty straightforward. I thought they'd make a great example here because tasks are kind of the same thing from company to company. You've got a task name, that is what has to happen. You've got a collaborator or a person in charge. In this case, I'm picking on myself and my teammate, Samantha Banana. And then I've also got a due date for every task. A task can't be a task unless you know when it's due and if it's due or if it's complete or not. So in order to get that one, we have a simple checkbox. Now I also want to know and track when things have been completed. So we have a last modified date time field in Airtable and we can turn it to look at a specific field to see when that thing was checked or, or altered. So we can tell that the last date of modification for all these checkboxes was you know this date and time. But what I don't love about this is you'll notice here if I accidentally check a box and then I go, oh, wait, no, actually, I meant to check a different one and I uncheck the box. Well, that last modified time is going to still tell me, oh, well, you unchecked the box at 1118 a.m. That's not really helpful if I want to know when the thing was completed. So then I build a simple formula here that says, hey, I only want to have an output if it's checked off. So this is just saying, hey, if it's marked complete, then I'm going to show you when the last modified time was. And if it's not, then I'm going to stay blank. Pretty straightforward. So anyway, nice little hack or workaround for you there. But the important thing here is I want to calculate what is the week that this needs to, that this task needs to be connected to. So I'm assuming here that we, you know, start our weeks for this company on Monday. Maybe yours is a different day of the week. So your formula is going to be different, but I'm trying to calculate what is the Monday associated with this date. And it's a little convoluted. I'll definitely post this formula below and let you play around with it yourself and see how it works. It's probably a little too complicated to go into for this particular video. But essentially what I'm calculating here is what is the Monday of this week? So here's one, 1029, Monday is the 28th, right? Oh, I'm sorry, 929, Monday's the 28th. In this case, 103. Well, what's Monday? It's going to be this day right here, which is what? 30, 29, 28. And so this is outputting the 28th of September. So what we're doing again is we're just calculating what is the Monday that that thing should be assigned to. Okay, now talk about weekly emails. This is where we say, hey, look, we've got the email name and it's basically the Monday. And you might think that this is a little redundant, but this has to do with the way that Airtable stores dates inside of, or how it frames or thinks about dates. So this field here is just a date. And if I were to just output this date, it's gonna be a string of numbers. And this makes what we need to do a little bit difficult, in fact, impossible to interact with in that way. So what I need to do is convert that string to just a month, day, year. And so this, although these look identical, the way Airtable interprets this is totally different. This is a date time, and this is a specific output, month slash day slash year. I get this by using the date time format, look at the email date, and I output it in this standard format, which is just lowercase l, which is shorthand for month, day, year. Now, I'm also able to calculate the end of the week, this is important because this is when I want to send this email, right? So when it's the end of the week, I want to know which of my tasks got done, who did them, who didn't do them, what's going on there. So we're able to just do a little date calculation here, take that email date, add six days to it. Obviously that's the end of the week. Now, each of these 
tasks that we have in our other table is connecting to the appropriate week that it's assigned to. We have an automation that does this, and I'll go into that in a moment, but the important thing here is that we're connecting that. And then we're gonna leverage three different rollup fields in this case to get the data split out the way we want it. So taking a look at these, the first one saying, hey, I want to know what tasks Gareth completed this week. So I can set up these conditions that say, I want to bring in the task name into this rollup field that's associated with the task that's connected here, where the collaborator is Gareth and that complete box is checked. And then I use this aggregation function. It's an array compact inside of an array join, and I'm breaking out those values with a slash n which means that they're gonna be appearing on new lines. And so I can take that then and it outputs, oh, well, task one and task two were completed by Gareth. In this case though, uh, you know, task five and task three were completed by Samantha because this of course has different conditions. And then lastly, we're able to track our incomplete tasks where tasks are not checked off and list those out. Now, the really cool thing about this is that the email that comes out is going to give us a nice summary of all this without ever even needing to write a script. I know scripts can be a little intimidating. They certainly are for me when we get into the coding parts of things. So this is a way to keep it nice and user friendly without needing to get too deep in the weeds on the code. But basically what we're doing is we're just able to list everything out. Now, this is fully interactive. So as these things get checked off, let's mark off task nine and 10, we'll see them appear in the proper connections here. So now task nine is complete, task 10 is complete, but we still have these three things that haven't been completed yet. Now, let's jump into the first automation and that is the weekly email gets sent. This we can build inside of Airtable automations and they built a really cool trigger. A trigger is the, the thing that happens that sets the automation into motion. And we have this really cool trigger that says a record matches a specific condition. So we can say when some, when there's a record in the weekly email where the end of the week is today, then we want this automation to go. We want that to set the thing into motion. So in this case, we could say, well, when the end of the week is 927 or, or I'm sorry, when 927 is today, then this thing will fire off. So that way it's setting out or sending out an automated email. Very, very cool use case there. Now, this uh, works perfectly and we are able to roll up or take those rollups of data that we already have here and put them out in our weekly email. Flipping over now to what the email looks like, we get a nice roll up of all this data and we're able to make these headings bold by using a little bit of markdown formatting and it comes to us in an email that was set out to ourselves. So again, we can just enter as many different emails we, as we need here to send this automated email to the, our team members so that everyone stays on the same page and knows what happened in a particular span of time. Now, the more complicated part here is making sure that these new tasks get properly assigned to the week that they belong to. And if we take a look, you know, we have this cool week calculation going on for us. And really what we'd like to do is grab that week calculation and paste it here. So grab this and paste it over here and build that linked relationship. But we don't have that already set up. And again, we are trying to do this in this case without leveraging any scripting. So we can't actually build this using Airtable automation. And the reason for that is Airtable automation does not yet allow us to find a record in the automated process. We would need an action step where we actually look for this 928 and we take that and we look and find the corresponding record to our weekly email and then and only then can we connect them. Now the reason for that is when we build an automated process here that links to a record, we have to use the record ID to properly link to the corresponding record and we don't have that information without finding the record first. So unfortunately, that means we need to leverage Zapier in order to get this automation to work. So we build an automation called link to email. We set up conditions where in Airtable, we set up conditions in a specific view that say, well, if there is a collaborator and if there is a weekly, uh, a weekly calculation, but if we haven't already linked to the weekly email, 
That means that there's a record here that needs a link. When those conditions are met, that is what triggers this automation. Now this automation then is going to do the following. We're going to look and find the record. Remember that finding a record is the magic sauce here that we can't yet do in Airtable automations. We're going to find the record using the calculated value from the task that tells us what the Monday of the corresponding week is. And we're going to find that in our weekly email table. So again, if I were to just walk through an example, I'm going to take this 928 and I'm going to look for it here in my weekly email. Once I find the week that it corresponds to, now I know the record ID for that particular week. Then I'm able to update my record from step one. So I can take my record again from step one, that is the record that doesn't yet have a connection built, and I can assign it to or link it to the corresponding weekly uh, record here. So now I have that record ID Again, maybe at some point we'll be able to do this directly inside of Airtable, but as for now, we don't have that capability yet. So let's go ahead and give this a test run inside of our tasks. I'll build a new task here. Task number 14. I'll give it a due date of 10-4. We see then that once we give it a moment to think, Airtable then calculates the week calculation of 928. So once we have that, and once I assign a collaborator to this, then that record will appear in our new automated trigger table or tri uh, our new automated trigger view. Then we can give Zapier a moment to run or I can run it manually. And we're going to see that the weekly email gets filled out, thereby removing that record from this view. And if we go back and check, we now see that it's appropriately linked to the weekly email. Of course, then that information gets automatically summarized here on the uh, the summary tables here. So now that new task, task 14, is an incomplete task that's rolling up here. And of course, as the task is completed, then we will see it move from incomplete tasks over to tasks completed, and it will now be included in that information in the corresponding weekly email. As always, I hope you found that to be very helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, swing on by our website and check out all the resources we've put together. We have a free Airtable crash course that will get you up to speed quickly and easily in Airtable. And we also offer some paid services, including hourly consultations with our experts. We have some online group coaching programs and courses. And for the very advanced needs, we can build a bespoke project for you from scratch. So swing on by, and I look forward to connecting with you soon.